Hi everyone, Paul here again at Road Jovi Music. Uh, okay, so regular viewers of my channel will know from my last video that um, I said uh, I was taking a step back, taking a break from uploading videos and, and doing um, various projects um, to concentrate on uh, practicing actually playing some of my <laughs> instruments. Um, and after resting for, I don't know, a week, 10 days or so, uh, I've got itchy hands. <laughs> I need to crack on with another project. Uh, I, can't, I can't sit still for too long, it's, it drives me mad. Um, so um, I've got another project I'm gonna be doing now. Uh, it's not, nothing major, it's uh, just a, a mini project really. Um, because uh, as I said previously, um, I've now got 12 uh, of my own instruments. And um, I, ha I have a rack in my back room, uh, uh, basically a board all the way along the, the wall uh, with all my uh, hangers on, uh, that I've got all my instruments on. Now I only had 10 hangers and I was up to 12 instruments. So uh, there was always two instruments either in a gig bag or, or on a guitar stand. Wasn't happy with that. So I rejigged the uh, rack on the wall um, I, I took all the hangers off and moved, moved them a bit closer together, squeezed them all up uh, so that I could fit all my instruments on there. However, I accidentally <laughs> miscalculated the, um, the spacing between them and I ended up with my 12, hook, 12 uh, hangers plus space for three more. So <laughs> 12 instruments isn't, you know, why, why have one instrument when you can have 15? <laughs> So at the moment I've got 12, um, I want to get up to 15, just a nice round number. So I've been thinking um, just recently about what in other instruments I would like and um, I have five ukuleles at the moment. I've got two banjoleles uh, in concert and tenor with a high G and a low G respectively. Uh, and I've got three ukuleles in uh, concert and tenor again with high and low G respectively again, plus um, a baritone, which is obviously uh, a different tuning, D, G, B, E, uh, the same as the first four strings of a guitar. Um, I also do have an electric guitar, but um, I've always wanted to have and to learn to play an acoustic guitar. So, um, what I've done is I've liberated one of the guitars from there. So it was just there and this one was there. So I've taken this one, uh, which is um, a 38 inch guitar and you can see there's no cutaway on it. And the project I'm gonna do is convert this to left-handed for myself. Um, so to, com to convert the uh, configuration of a guitar from left to right handed or right to left handed, there are certain things that you need. Um, obviously all of the um, tools, um, most of them are just generic tools, but <coughs> some specific luthiery tools to, to do the job properly. Um, but also what you need is a uh, left-handed bridge saddle and nut kit which I have I've had this for quite a while um, it was always going to be used for something but I wasn't sure what so the, this is a left-handed nut and this is the left-handed bridge and saddle what's different you ask well if I compare it to a right-handed bridge and saddle uh, I don't know how well you can see that, but the the slant of the um, saddle, uh, they're always slanted to, to compensate uh, for intonation. So on the right-handed one, it slopes, you can see bottom here, and then it rises up this side, and the left-handed one goes the opposite way. And obviously the, the, the saddle itself is in the opposite way around. So you need uh, the proper, you know, bridge and saddle and nut to, to convert a guitar properly. You, you can do it in other ways, but, you know, if, if you want to do it properly, this, this is the way to go. So, I actually have 
two options of how I can do this. So as I said, this is my uh, left-handed bridge and saddle set. So this is the one that's on it at the moment. Now, um, the problem you can see right away is this is a completely different bridge. It's a different shape and it's not even the same length as the original one. Let's just get rid of that. Um, so, it, I mean, it is possible to change them over, but you can see from how different the, the new bridge is to the existing one, um, there would be a lot of work involved as far as uh, refinishing and, and lining everything up and, and um, uh, you know, just getting everything to look neat and tidy when it's finished. So if I was to replace the bridge completely, um, I would have to put this bridge in place, not glued, just, just in place with a couple of strings on it, um, to move the bridge around uh, to get the right position for intonation. Now, that in itself may also cause a problem in that, you know, I may need to slant it one way or the other uh, to get the correct intonation on, on the saddle, and then the bridge itself might end up you know, slightly askew one way or the other. Um, the, the, the intonation will be perfect, but the, the bridge positioning may not be. So, um, already you can see there are some issues with replacing the whole bridge. I mean, you know, the, the, it doesn't match. There will be a lot of refinishing. Um, you know, once I've got it lined up as far as intonation, the, the bridge itself might be askew, which isn't a problem mechanically, it just doesn't look very good. <coughs> so, my other option is to uh, remove the strings, remove the, the, the uh, bridge pins, remove the saddle, and what I can do is cut a piece of wood and actually fill in this slot. Okay, cut a piece of wood exactly to the same size, the same kind of material. I've, I've got old bridges with this material, so cut a plug and put in that slot. Nice, you know, tight, flush fitting, uh, sand it all level, and then recut um, a new uh, a new slot going in the opposite orientation, uh, and, and then just just fit the saddle rather than the, the bridge. That's the option I'm going for. Um, in the long run, it's an easier option. The, the only difficult part of this um, way of doing it is actually cutting the new slot because it has to be 100% accurate. So what I, will, what I will be doing is taking this one out, take, take the strings up and you know, take the, the, um, the saddle out, plug up that slot, glue it in place and get that all set and leveled and, and nicely tied it up. And then I will take uh, just a, um, you know, a spare saddle and uh, put it under the strings and just resting on top of the bridge. So it would need to be a very low, thin saddle. And I can always cut one down, one of my old ones. And place it on top of the bridge, under the strings, uh, and then a, you know, move it around and adjust it to get the correct intonation. Then when I've, once I've got it in the right position for intonation, I can then mark it uh, with a fine pencil uh, and then cut out the slot with my router. Um, so it, it's got to be 100% accurate because if it's not, once I've cut that slot, put the saddle in, that's where it's going. So, you know, I've got to get it right first time. And, um, you know, the, the, that's the most difficult part of this entire project is actually cutting that slot. Because first of all, I've got to get, get the right position, get it marked. But then actually cutting the slot with the router is the difficult part itself. Because I have to rig up some kind of jig um, to make sure everything is perfectly in line. And I cut that slot along the line that I've marked in exactly the right position, exactly the right length, width and depth so you know it that, that's the critical part of the job and the most difficult um but like i said overall that is the by far the easiest option 
Um, I'm not saying that replacing a bridge is difficult for me because I've done it many times. It's for me, it's it's not not a difficult job. I I can do it. What will be the difficult part of doing that will be um, getting everything tidied up as far as the finish and you know alignment and everything else, and that's going to be uh, too too much hassle. So I'm going with this option of filling in that slot on the existing bridge so I haven't got to remove the bridge and mess up the finish or anything like that and um, you know recut a new slot and then just knock this nut out just tap it out with a hammer or something and replace it with the left-handed nut that's a really really simple job that um, I could do that with my eyes closed in about five minutes or well, probably less um, so before um, I actually get into the job. I've been looking over the guitar just to check things over. Now, I'm not sure again how well you can see, but that bridge is quite thick, it's quite tall. Um, and the saddle is, and you're not going to be able to see that, I don't think, the saddle is quite low in the slot um, to obviously bring, bring the string action as low as possible. Now, Having looked at it, the action uh, at the 12th fret is ridiculously high. It's probably um, close to 5 mil above the 12th fret on the bass string and probably about 4 mil above the fret at the treble string, at the treble E, the, the, the bass E, the treble E, um, which is far too high. It's at least 50% higher than it should be. So looking at how low the saddle already is in the bridge, um, I'm not sure how much I would be able to lower it. So I may end up having to sand the top of the bridge a little bit lower. Uh, that again is, is, is not the easiest job because you've got to make sure you stay you know, perfect. It is a radius uh, bridge. <coughs> only slightly but there's a radius to it and I've got to make sure that I sand the, an equal amount off across uh, the entirety of the bridge and you know it's it's not it's not the easiest of shapes we've got step down here and here and also at the back side um, so I'll be just be going across that part so that may or may not be necessary and if it is it's a relatively tricky job in that you've got to make sure you stay 100% accurate again. Now, uh, looking down the, the fretboard from, from the top and from the bottom up, I can see also that there is an underbow uh, in this neck. Unfortunately, it does have uh, an adjustable truss rod in it, um, provided that's working okay I can I can adjust that and take take the underbow out of the neck which will lower the action very slightly it doesn't really have much effect um, on the string action as such but it, it will you know the, the fretboard effectively is bowed under like that and when you straighten it then it does you know in the middle at least it, it brings the action down slightly so I will adjust the truss rod uh, you know, straighten the neck and, and string it up. Um, uh, what, once I've recut the slot and you know and got that, I'll, I'll put it all together and see what it's like. And if the action is okay, great. If not, then I will have to you know sand a bit off the top of that bridge, possibly, uh, and also bring the saddle down as well. Uh, okay, so that's this project. Um, now. What I need to do now is just, just strip it down, take the strings off, take, take the, the bridge pins out, take the saddle out, and um, you know start to get a better look at uh, what I need to be doing. Um, I don't think I'm gonna record all of that. <laughs> In fact, what I will do, I'm gonna pause, pause the video now and um, strip everything down, have a closer look at, at everything, uh, see what I can find, um, and then uh, I'll bring you back and you know if I found anything interesting or further um, I'll talk about that otherwise we'll be starting to get into the the project itself as I said it is a mini project but it's something uh, I've wanted to do for quite a long time actually and you know thought should I shouldn't I yeah I will no I won't you know and 
because I don't really like to take stock from the shop. But I've had this guitar in stock for a long time, a very long time, probably two years. <laughs> and I've had some interest in it, but it's never actually sold. So I thought, sod it, I'm going to have it. <laughs> okay, and it's quite a pretty guitar, I think, anyway. I mean, it's a, it's a smaller one, 38 inch, as I said, which, which I personally prefer. I, was, I did want to get a tenor guitar, um, but, you know, here in Thailand, um, obscure instruments as they are here really are difficult to come by I would have to order overseas and I would end up paying so much in shipping fees I probably could have bought at least two so you know I go with what I've got for the, for the time being um, I am going to be ordering at least one bass ukulele um, possibly two not sure yet um, one in uh, um, acoustic electric and one solid bo solid body electric hopefully so those are the other instruments that i'm going to hopefully get and that will make up with this 15 and that's it i mean it i'm going to stop um i can't have any more than that i don't really know why i want that many but there you go there it is okay so i'm going to pause this now strip this down and bring you back shortly and see where we're at <laughs> 